Hola, buenos dias. Bienvenidos para Weld.com. Oh, wait, sorry. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Weld.com. Today we're going to talk about discontinuity. So it's going to be the first video of a, a series, and we're just going to go through and take you step by step, and we're going to address different weld discontinuities, how to avoid them, what they are, uh, common mistakes involved with them. Note that a welding discontinuity does not automatically call for a rejection. Okay, so while all defects are discontinuities, not all discontinuities are weld defects. So depending on which code book you're working with, you are allotted a certain amount of undercut per linear inch. You're allowed a certain amount of porosity per diameter in linear inch. So there's just different things and it all depends on which code you're working with. I don't want to get into the specifics of it because if I say one thing, somebody's going to say, well, that's not how it is in my code. And I'm, this is just a general well discontinuities. How do I identify them and then how to avoid them? Uh, in the future. So we're going to go ahead and get right into it. Probably the most, we're going to address the, the three most common today, which is undercut, porosity, and arc strikes. So we're going to start there. They're pretty basic. Uh, we're going to show you how to, how to avoid them and what, exactly what they are. Okay, so the first one we're going to talk about is undercut. So undercut's pretty common. What that is, it's an eroded edge along the toe of one, if not both, of the toes of the weld. So essentially what that does is if I have undercut on both sides of this material, this material is 3 8 thick, and I have a 16th undercut on each side, I've basically deducted a 16th from the thickness of this material. So I have, that's roughly uh, 6 sixteenths, so now I'm down to 5 sixteenths thickness. The plate is no longer 3 8 of an inch thick. I don't know what that is in metric for you folks across the pond. I do apologize. Camera guy's got you covered. He's going to put some notes here maybe here, somewhere, he'll put some notes in. What can cause undercut is improper travel speed. So if I travel down this joint too fast, I can get undercut. And that's because I'm not giving that rod or that electrode time to fill in. Another thing is poor work angle. Ideally, what I wanna have is half of my weld on the vertical part of this plate and half of it on the horizontal part of this plate. Now, I wanna maintain a, an even angle between the two. So 45 is roughly where I wanna be. If I start getting too far one way or the other, I'm bound to get undercut. I'm, I'm gonna show you that here in a second. If I have a travel angle, or I'm sorry, a work angle that's too high, I'm gonna get undercut along this top edge. So another thing that can cause undercut is if my arc length is too long. So ideally, I wanna keep my arc length no more than the diameter of this electrode. So if I have eighth inch electrode, I don't wanna be any more than an eighth inch off the edge of that puddle. I like to stay close to the puddle. That's just me personally. Uh, it's just a habit I've developed, but you don't want to go any further than one eighth. You start getting outside of that area, you're going to start getting undercut. You have to think, as I pull this rod further away from this plate, my voltage is going to increase. Okay, it's a constant current process. Stick welding is a constant current process. If I pull back far enough, the voltage becomes my variable. Okay, it'll increase when I pull back too far. It'll decrease when I get in too close because that additional voltage it's gonna start cutting away in the sides and it's not, gonna, it's not gonna fill in properly. So we'll go ahead and we'll put all those together and we'll see if we can whip you up some undercut. So as you can see, the work angle that I have here is improper. It's way too high, it's a lot higher than what I need. If you wanna bring this down, you bring it down to about a 45 degree angle and that should be about where you want it. This weld, we're doing everything wrong, okay? Travel speed's too high, work angle's incorrect, Amperage is, is set up, uh, you know, a little bit above normal, just so I can produce that undercut, so I can show those that don't know exactly what it is, uh, what to look for. But because of the angle, the speed, I ended up with that undercut on that top edge, which is where I wanted it. You know, if I was welding vertical, you know, you could get undercut on the left or the right hand side just because you're not spending enough time on the sides. But here it's going to be more prevalent on the vertical piece or the top leg or the top toe of that weld that you're going to put in there. Another thing you see in here because of that excessive arc length, when I pulled back is I had excessive spatter on the work piece as well. So that's just kind of like molten metal that's, that's popping off or because the puddle's too hot, you know, it's, it's kind of bouncing out. There's too much energy in there and this stuff's gonna spray all over the place. You wanna get rid of that also. You don't wanna leave that on your plates, especially if you know, you're getting weld inspections. Um, you know, the inspector's gonna look for that. Go ahead, take your time, clean up your plate. 
Next thing we're going to talk about is arc strikes. So arc strikes happen for mainly one reason, eh, possibly two. Arc strikes are typically caused due to carelessness, recklessness, you're not paying attention, um, accidentally touch the workpiece, you know, with a live electrode and you scrape down there, it's discontinuity, you want to avoid arc strikes in your weld material. They can cause micro cracks outside of the welding area, especially if on a uh, building or a structure that's cyclically loaded. That little microstructure, those little cracks in there, they can start propagating through the weld metal or the, the base metal. So you don't want arc strikes on your material. It's going to be up to the inspector whether he's going to have you cut that piece out, remove it, repair it, whatever the case may be. So you want to avoid arc strikes. Um, the biggest thing that I see that causes arc strikes, like I said, is carelessness. But when students are first, well, students and experienced uh, welders, when they strike the arc and they get stuck, they want to fight the rod back and forth and just kind of pop it off there, uh, you know, versus just disconnecting the stinger, letting the electrode sit there for a second, cool off, and then snap it. What happens is, once this becomes stuck and I start moving back and forth, I don't know when it's going to break free. This thing breaks free and then I get arc strike all the way across my plate, way outside of my welding zone. That's what you want to try to avoid. All right, next we're going to talk about porosity, your tiny little weld bubbles that are in your weld. Uh, what can cause porosity is if you're welding and it is too windy outside, so if you're using a gas metal arc welding process outside and it's too windy, you can get porosity. If you're using flux core outside, so up to a certain amount of miles per hour of the wind, you can get porosity that way. If you're not using uh, the appropriate cubic feet per hour of shielding gas for a gas metal arc welding process, you can get porosity. Hydrocarbons such as WD-40 or paint or anything like that that is on the base material, if you don't clean that off, that can cause porosity as well. So we're gonna go ahead and get into it and show you exactly what porosity looks like. So we're welding along normal. All right, now Man Cub's gonna hit the weld zone with a little bit of compressed air to simulate a uh, big gust of wind coming through or welding outside. So as you can see, everything's pretty unruly, no gas covered, getting porosity, trailing the weld. It's not a good condition. A very blustery day under here. All right guys, so that's pretty much porosity in a nutshell. You can get porosity with pretty much any welding process that you do. It's all about gas coverage and shielding that weld pool, keeping everything nice and clean in that area, taking off any mill scale, dirt, debris, hydrocarbons, oils, solvents, anything like that. Uh, flux core arc welding is also prone to wormhole porosity. So that's a different type of porosity. You typically don't get with shielded metal arc welding or gas metal arc welding. Go ahead and check out our previous video, how to avoid wormholes, if that's something you're experiencing. So that pretty much concludes this episode. Like I said, it's the first of a, a series. So I hope you guys learned something. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, make sure you hit that little bell button down here. You'll get new notifications every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5.30 Eastern Standard Time when we release new videos. And until next time, make every weld better than your last. Take three. And action. What a Did you guys see that? That's what I gotta put up with. Hello again. <laughs>